Most angry customers on Pawn Stars. What do we got here? Four uh, volumes of history of Don Quixote. Did you ever read Don Quixote? 40, 50 years ago. Do you remember any of it? Not really. Okay. Inside the front cover, it said it's a fourth edition printing from 1731. Okay. Don Quixote is a novel about an ordinary guy who decides to put on a suit of armor and go out looking for adventures. This seller brought in a Don Quixote book, which was a part of her dad's book collection. She claimed that the book was written in 1731, but Rick wasn't too sure about this. Obviously bought before 1962 at a bookstore in uh, Salt Lake City. See an address without a zip code, that means it's like 1962 or before. That's when they came out with zip codes. This is hand-laid paper. You know, it's been a popular book for over 400 years. These books are hundreds of years old, leather-bound, so I'm betting they're actually worth quite a bit. Rick was very optimistic about these books, as these books were hundreds of years old. Rick still had some doubts, as he had limited knowledge on these books, so he consulted an expert. And critics largely agree that it's the most important novel ever written. So this is a big deal. The first edition in Spanish was printed in 1605. This edition here is over 100 years after that. Okay. I see. Uh, this is normally not a good thing. You're lucky because later printings like this can still have some collectible value. The expert took a look at the book and didn't have good news for the seller. Even though the expert confirmed the book wasn't as valuable as the seller stated it was, the book still had some value. The expert gave her final appraisal of the book, which didn't make the seller too happy. In this condition, all four volumes would probably retail mm -hmm. at $1,500 to $1,800. Really? Oh, okay. I'm disappointed. I, I thought they were more valuable. I'm really not good at negotiating, and I trust you guys. The book was appraised at $1,500, which was a huge disappointment for the seller. The seller would then claim she trusts the Pawn Stars, but what she does next contradicts that statement. I'm looking a thousand bucks. Twelve fifty. It kind of bugs me when a seller says they trust me to come up with a price, and then they try and get more out of me. Let's let's do it. Okay, it's a deal. Thousand dollars. Thank you. I'll meet you right up front, and we'll do some paperwork. Thank you. This next seller had this sweet 1970 Chevy Impala for sale. Apparently, it was his mother's car, but now he was looking to sell it. This was even the best-selling full-size car in U.S. history, and the seller was looking to cash out. All right, so what do we got here? Well, we got my mom's car. We've had it since it was new. Must have been a pretty hot mama. <laughs> 1970 Chevy Impala, small block 350. I may be about 80 years old, but I still get some good-looking chicks. Chevy Impala has been a hit since it came out in the late 50s. People love these cars. Rick was definitely impressed with this car, and this seller was beyond hilarious and kind of reminds me of my grandpa. In addition to all this, the customer had cool customizations on the car. Damn, you got a lot of chrome under there. Yeah, I've got everything chrome that can be. It also sounds good. I don't mean to sound like a dickly, but your interior is shot in this car. It's going to have to be redone. While this was a pretty sick-looking car... It had some damage to it that brought the value of the car down significantly. Regardless, Rick was still interested in purchasing it, and the negotiations started to get heated. Well, I've got it, a figure in my mind of $21,000. i am thinking this is maybe a $5,000 car. Literally, for like $10,000, I can get a convertible with a 400 in pretty decent shape. I don't think I can accept your offer, gracious as it is. I won't call you thieves, but uh, you're a little low, and I'm just going to have to let it go. The following seller is a complete clown. He enters the shop with a statue he knows nothing about and was seriously expected to get at least $6,000 for the statue. He had a very stubborn demeanor to him. I have a bronze statue I like to sell. Do you know much about it? I don't know what to tell you about that. I want to sell my statue for about $6,000, but you know, if the color... I can take 55, but I won't take less. It was made in 1888 uh, by Emile Picard. Picard was an artist in France. He was born in the 1830s, died around 1915. It turns out this statue was the Perseus and Pegasus statue sculpted by Emile Louis Picot, and only 800 of the statues were made. Within only a couple minutes, Rick noticed some major red flags on the statue. The patina looks right. What doesn't look right? Is there's some pity right here. To be honest, I don't know how to respond. I believe this was recast probably around 40, 50 years ago, long after Picoult died. It says made in USA below it. This was not made in 1888. What you've seen and what you can prove is two different stories. 
Instead of just accepting the fact that he brought in a fake item, this customer started to raise his voice at Rick, who was just being very respectful to him despite his rudeness. The customer didn't stop and even got the attention of security. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of You know, well, it's all right, Antoine. I got it. I got it. But when we don't feel comfortable with something, we're going to back off. We really appreciate you bringing it in, but it's not for us. Chumley received a call from a seller who was looking to sell his pirate ship parade float. It was originally used to promote Christianity, but now is being sold. The seller was asking for an astronomically high amount. Plus, you had a boat. It is a boat. Does it float? No, it is a float. I thought a boat floats. This boat floats in a parade. I'm asking $250,000. Why don't you come on aboard? All right. Those black pipes, they pump out all the fog you could ever want. It's got the front stage. You come down the stairs, you got center stage. We've got lasers that come out of there that paint the whole floor green. This was a pretty cool float with a plethora of different features. Chumley was definitely impressed. Chumley sent images of the float to Rick and Corey, and they were hoping Chumley wouldn't buy it. A pirate ship? You can actually drive 50 miles an hour on the highway? This is awesome. Don't buy the float. Send. Oh, I'm on a boat. Sup, ladies? I'm waiting to show this to everyone. If I can make a deal, Rick will think I'm the man. Chumley was more than interested in purchasing this float, and I can't blame him. It is pretty cool. The seller would then state his ridiculous high price, which Chumley shut down almost instantly, and these negotiations really made the seller mad. What are you trying to get for it? $250,000. I can give you $100,000. Bottom dollars, $190,000. $190,000. That's giving it away. I don't think my boss would let me spend that much. That's it? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm gonna have to pass. No, that's bull****. Whatever. The following seller brings in this really fascinating jukebox from 1973. He claims that it was the last of its kind to come out. This was a Wurlitzer jukebox, which was a juggernaut in the jukebox industry during its time. Their name is so synonymous with jukeboxes. I mean, mm -hmm. people stop calling them jukeboxes and start calling them Wurlitzers. Yeah. One of the big things you always want to check for is yellowing and stuff, but I don't see any real damage. Can we plug it in and see if it works? There it goes, huh? I guess it works. This is that music. You can, feel, can you feel that? Not only did this jukebox have little to no damage, but it was still working after all of these years. The seller was looking to get a decent amount of money for this jukebox and stated his price of $4,500. However, Corey didn't know much about the jukebox, so he consulted an expert. How are you? Doing well. Hey, chum. Hey, how you doing? Oh, look at this. This 1050 was made in 1973. They made 1,600 of that's these right, models. Right. Their stuff was really great looking, and it's the name associated with jukebox. The condition looks almost excellent. All right, well, that's good to know. I would estimate the value on this based on the condition that it's in from $35 to $4,500. This customer was one of the few customers actually gave a reasonable offer from the start. Even the expert was amazed by how clean and maintained this jukebox was. Despite everything the expert stated, Corey low-balled the seller. $2,000. Wow, that's too low, too low. Have you seen how full my floor is out there? How many of these do you have out there? You got me. 3200 and that's final. And we're still friends. Meet me at three grand. 3000 sound 3, 000, good? 3000 is the deal. Okay, right, cool. thank you. The following hot-headed customer enters the pawn shop looking to sell his Porsche 911 engine. The customer had some pretty big expectations for this engine and was looking to get at least $3,600 for it. What do you got here? It's a 2000 Porsche Carrera 911 engine. Six-cylinder, water-cooled, pancake motor. They're much better balanced. Where did you get it? I get it from my junkyard. I bought the engine because I want to build a Baja. Was it right by the ocean? Yeah. Because it looks like it's got a lot of water damage. But not inside, just outside. While Rick knew that these engines were valuable, this one in particular had significant water damage. The seller stated his price, but Rick wasn't sure what to offer, so he called in an expert. How much you want for it? Uh, 4500 It's a cool motor, but I got some concerns. It looks like water damage. I just want someone to look at it. I mean, they're great performance motors. They're lightweight. They got a great low center of gravity. Tell me, uh, what's your concerns about this? Um, it looks like it's got some water damage. You know, there's a lot of compartments that should have been closed up, and they're all open. Expert was able to confirm that there were some serious issues with the engine, as many of its important and delicate parts were left wide open. 
The seller strongly disagreed and then started being extremely passive-aggressive towards the expert. You're wrong. This good engine is not going to make you no problems. If you bring a good mechanic, he will tell you what to do. You have to bring a good mechanic, I mean, a professional one that they can know what to do. Danny's my man. I mean, this guy can fix anything. Absolutely. He did bring a good one. Not anything. Credit to the expert for remaining so calm, even after all the disrespect. This seller just couldn't handle the fact that his engine was in horrible condition and was in a junkyard out of all places. Rick didn't even want to make an offer. Thanks a lot, man. I'm just going to, I'm going to pass. I mean, there's just, it scares me too much. And I just don't think the risk reward is here. So thanks for bringing it down. Right. I appreciate it. Um, good luck with it. The following seller enters the pawn shop with this really unique ring pistol. It definitely isn't something we often see on Pawn Stars. Rick and the old man were just puzzled by this ring, but the owner was confident in its value. I'm here to sell my ring pistol today. Ring pistol? Yeah. It's a pistol ring. All right, what? Yeah, it's like something James Bond would wear. I'm looking to get 9,000. I'll use it to buy some of the things I collect more often. It's uh, called an Imperial Protector. It's novelty, but it's also seriously a gun. This ring wasn't just for looks and had the potential to do some serious damage. This was a one-of-a-kind ring that had a really unique mechanism behind it. This ring utilized a pen-fire mechanism and was in great condition. I mean, the neat thing is, it's really, really well done, though. This is really nice machining. It's in really good shape. Someone really spent some time and spent some money making this thing. How much did you want for it? A nine grand. They're, they're pretty rare. The customer was asking for $9,000 for this ring pistol. But Rick didn't know much about the ring, so he called in an expert. He was extremely interested in purchasing it, as he has never seen anything like it before. The expert had this to say. This is the Imperial Protector, basically French, mid-1800s, uh, 1880s. Unbelievably well-made gun. Take a little screwdriver, unscrew the center cylinder, take it out, load the rounds, put it back in. Normally, I see them go from between four to 6,000, uh, of course. The ammunition would make it more. Thanks, Tony. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rick. Good seeing you. Hey, Tony. The expert stated that this pistol gun had serious value, and people were even bidding for it. The customer was asking for $9,000 and was beyond confident that it was worth that much. Rick tried to talk him down, but the seller barely budged. I'll give you $3,000 for it. <laughs> no, no. Can't do it. Sorry. Would you take four? Um, no. I've seen them at $11,000, $12,000. I'd go five grand on it. No. Okay. 7000 would be my top dollar. $100 bills. Bottom line, 8500 I'm sorry, I just can't do it. The following seller enters the pawn shop with a Hollywood document with over 185 signatures of Hollywood's top celebrities during the early 1900s. The seller had high expectations, but Rick pointed out something wrong with the document. I've got probably one of the rarest Hollywood documents you've ever had come to your store. 185 signatures on here. That is pretty cool. But it sort of sucks that they're so crammed together like this. Samuel Goldwyn, John Ford, William Wyler, Elia Kazan, Clark Gable, John Wayne, Mickey Rooney. It does have some incredible people on it. There definitely were some big names on the document, and Rick was genuinely amazed by it. The seller stated his price, which made Rick feel very uncertain as he didn't like all the crammed signatures. He consulted an expert. How much do you want to sell this for? $16,000. Okay. One of the big problems you have here is they're all jumbled together. Give me a few minutes. Let me call someone and get them down here and take a look at this thing. Just make sure everything's legit and help me figure out a price. This rawhide here we're dealing with. This area here, overlapping here, again up on top. The expert took a deep look at the ink and everything matched up perfectly. This document was legit and the expert was amazed by it. The expert appraised this document and it was lower than the seller expected. Based on that, I value this piece right at about $5,000. Realistically, what would you take for it? I'm really close to $16,000 right now. How much? $16,000. There's just no way I can. I'll give you $3,500 for it. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot less than what I'm prepared to, to consider. I think I'm going to hold on to it. But I thank you very much for the offer. 